The largest tree in the world is so massive, it even earned itself the nickname General Sherman. It stands tall in California's Sequoia National Park, stretching its branches at 275 feet toward the sky. That's almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty. As for its weight, if we could place it on a scale, we'd need 400 elephants to balance things out. Its base stretches 36 feet in diameter, big enough to hide two sedans parked end-to-end. -end. California is the last place on Earth where these colossal trees grow naturally. During the Ice Age, they flourished across North America and Europe, but as the glaciers retreated, so did the sequoias. Today, they thrive along the western slope of the Sierra Nevada range, relying on the melting glacier caps to quench their thirst. General Sherman gathers thousands of visitors every day, and the park's infrastructure caters to this. There's a short half-mile walk from the nearest parking lot that leads to the big green giant. Along the way, a stone marker outlines the shape and size of the tree's base, to give visitors a sense of its immense scale. This sassy sequoia is estimated to be around 23 to 2700 years old and has witnessed centuries of change. It sprouted during the early days of the Roman Empire. When Europeans arrived in California in the late 1800s, they first tried to harvest the sequoias, thinking they had valuable wood. However, the sheer effort required to take down these giants was enormous for those days. They also soon figured out that this type of wood was a bit more brittle than expected, so they let these trees off the hook. As for its name, the tree shares it with General William Tecumseh Sherman, a 19th-century famous American public servant. Not far from General Sherman stands the world's second-largest tree, named General Grant. Discovered by locals years before General Sherman received its name, this tree has weathered its own share of challenges, including fires. But like its counterpart, it survived, mostly thanks to its thick bark and resilient hardwood. Now, as for the oldest tree, for a long time, we've known it to be a great basin bristlecone pine named Methuselah, also found in California. It's been around for more than 4,800 years, way before the Egyptians built the pyramids of Giza. This tree's location is a bit of a secret to keep it safe from harm. Now, Methuselah and its friends grow way up high in California, Nevada, and Utah, where it's tough to survive. The place is cold with dry soil and fierce winds, but these strong timbers have figured out how to thrive, getting their nutrients from the hard, rocky ground up in the mountains. Their branches are twisted and gnarled because of the winds blowing in all directions as they reach maturity. It does make their appearance a bit messy but it's an added layer of resistance for those trees during powerful storms. Their roots only feed the branches right above them. So if one part of the tree's roots fades away, only that part of the tree will be affected. Now, there's a new contender, however, for the same title of the oldest tree. In Chile, there's a Patagonian cypress called Gran Abuelo, which means great-grandfather in Spanish. It might even be older than Methuselah by about 500 years. This would mean this tree has seen people roaming around during the Bronze Age. To figure out a tree's age, we generally need to look inside its bark and count its rings. For the Gran Aboyo, though, scientists use complex math to estimate how old it is. Some experts aren't convinced by this method just yet. No matter which tree is older, both Methuselah and the Gran Aboyo have seen a lot of changes in their long lives. Each ring in their trunks holds info about the weather from the year it grew. Scientists can learn a ton about past climates on our planet by studying these ancient trees. Now, the world's tallest tree is also off-limit to visitors, but this is a recent safety measure. Its name is Hyperion, and it's located in Redwood National Park, California. Standing at a towering 380 feet, Hyperion is a coastal redwood, taller than the length of an American football field. Named after a character in Greek mythology, Hyperion was discovered in 2006 by two researchers. The park is home to other incredibly tall trees like Helios and Icarus, both also reaching heights of over 370 feet. The impressive height of redwoods in Northern California is due to their leaves and the region's climate. These trees absorb and store moisture from morning fog and their sprouts promote growth after injury, allowing them to live for a very long time. 
However, their shallow roots make them susceptible to damage from hikers. Besides being a record holder, Hyperion's appearance may not live up to the hype. Witnessing its towering height from the ground is hard, and its trunk isn't that impressive. Hyperion is currently tucked away in a closed-off section with no official trail. But despite this, many tree enthusiasts have trampled through over the years, harming the habitat leading up to it. Trash has also been found along the way in the past. The park recently issued a statement urging visitors to steer clear of this tree. Otherwise, they could face hundreds of dollars worth of fines and even end up behind bars. The Tree of Life stands as a resilient symbol amidst the arid desert landscape of Bahrain. Nestled in the highest point of the country, this ancient tree defies odds, captivating visitors with its mysterious and inexplicable presence. It's surrounded by endless stretches of heated dunes in the Arabian desert. Because it stands alone against the desert backdrop, it has puzzled scientists and botanists for years. There's little to no rainfall over there. There are also no freshwater sources nearby. Despite the lack of moisture, the tree of life insists on flourishing, flaunting its green foliage. How it manages to survive in such harsh conditions led to some weird theories. Some speculate that the tree's roots go deep into the earth, reaching depths of up to 160 feet to access underground water reserves. Others suggest that the tree has adapted to its environment, drawing moisture from the surrounding sand grains through specialized mechanisms. One other interesting idea is that the Tree of Life lies at the side of the legendary Garden of Eden, getting its water from a mystical source. Apart from its scientific and cultural significance, the Tree of Life is an important tourist attraction for locals, luring in approximately 65,000 visitors each year. All for a tree. Hmm. Now, Poland has its fair share of trees worth mentioning, all gathered in the Crooked Forest. It's a group of 400 trees that bend strangely. They all have a similar shape, curving sharply toward the sky in little J-shapes, almost touching the ground. People have different ideas about why these trees look like that. Some think a heavy snowstorm covered them when they were young, pushing them down. Others believe the area's gravity might have affected how they grow. One interesting theory is that people who planted these trees back in the 1920s might have bent them on purpose. They wanted to use the curved shapes to expedite the furniture manufacturing process. So when the trees were about 10 years old, they interfered with their growth, making them develop in this odd shape. After the manipulation process was stopped, it left the trees in this weird position for decades. Either way, whatever happened to one tree happened to them all because they're all adjusted in the same way. So human intervention is the most likely explanation. Even though all the trees in the crooked forest look the same with their spooky bend, they still manage to grow tall and healthy. They've adapted to their difficult conditions, and somehow, they've managed to keep growing upwards. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.